Hello YouTube, welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm up here in my trial MCT1 block. I've been doing a fair bit of mowing in the cooler day today. I haven't mown this little area yet and um, I'm doing this video uh, deliberately now so that I can show you that, you know, all, all along my plantings of clover and pinto peanut on the ground near the macadamia trees, it's doing rather nicely and I've done videos on this before so I won't dwell on it but basically having a legume as a cover crop gives free nitrogen to your plants because all legumes um, what they do what is called fixing nitrogen but what that really means is that they take nitrogen from the atmosphere which is 70% nitrogen and down in their roots convert it to nitrogen that can be used both by the legume itself but there's usually some left over for surrounding plants. And so the presence of clover, while some people in, in the big cities think it's an ugly sight in their lawns, it's actually very beneficial nitrogen wise. And this particular area that I've spent more time than average sort of getting rid of the, 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 the normal junk grasses that I've got on Nutkin Farm is, is behaving quite well and you know you don't rely on it entirely for your nitrogen supply to the trees but you know every little helps and my mct ones this year i'm seeing some examples of some cropping for the first time since they were planted a bit over three years ago so that's nice the um reason for this video though is that while legumes have this relationship with nitrogen, they don't actually make it themselves. They have a relationship with bacteria. And the bacteria around the roots of legumes is what produces the nitrogen for both the legume and the surrounding plants. And it's an interesting bacterial relationship, but until recently, no one ever thought of trying to make other plants have that relationship as well but there's a new product that's already being used in america and is apparently coming to australia in 2024 it's made by the um, dow corning company i think it's now called dow dupont and um, their agricultural company is called corteva agri science i think um, but their product called utricia n is a bacterial spray and it basically puts, deliberately puts a new strain of bacteria on the plants you spray it on. Um, its mechanism is you spray it on the underside of the leaves. So any normal sprayer can just spray the underside of the leaves. The bacteria gets in through the stomates, which are on the underside of the leaves, and goes through the entire living tissue of the plant all the way from the leaves to the stems to the roots, everywhere there's living tissue. That bacteria then uses methanol, which is a byproduct of the, the plant's metabolism. So it doesn't take any energy from the tree itself. It uses the byproduct of its metabolism to produce nitrogen for the tree. And you know, it, there hasn't been any extensive testing on things like macadamias yet, but in the US it's used on annual crops like wheat, grasses in particular, plants that require a lot of nitrogen. And it's supposedly successful in the US, but there's a plan to bring it in for some nut fruits, um, including macadamias, um, elsewhere in the world, including Australia. The uh, application for, for the annual crops in America is, well, obviously once per crop, once a year. They're annual crops. They die and you, you put in new ones. They don't know whether you'll need annual sprays on a crop like macadamias because, in theory, the bacteria lives while ever the tree has green tissue and macadamias, as we know, are evergreen trees. Uh, and in, in any case, it lives in the trunk and roots of the plant as well, so much more extensive than for legumes. The question is really, is it desirable and is it safe? So dealing with desirable first, well, look, um, nitrogen is one of the absolute building blocks of any plant and macadamia is no exception. You need it for green leafy growth 
and you know normally particularly in the chemical fertilizer world we rely on urea and urea then the production of that produces by itself um, around two percent of the world's um, emissions um, carbon emissions largely because a lot of urea is produced in russia where they're using lots of gas that they have in these natural resources and they're using gas to make ammonia uh, and then turning that into a fertilizer product that was shipped around the world or at least till the sanctions came in and the rest of the world had to start making its own urea but either way it's a very energy intensive process and normally involves large quantities of fossil fuels so if you can get the plants to produce their own ammonia which is what this bacteria does you'd have to say that's great you're not putting fertilizer in the soil where it could leach away it is specific to the plant that you want to um, to produce the nitrogen um, and you know obviously the bigger the tree the more nitrogen it will produce it's a very in a way a very bespoke solution on a tree by tree basis but I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I'd be an early adopter of this. It does say that the methanol produced by plants is a waste product. It's a waste product of this photosynthesis and that the bacteria feed on this methanol. But there are other studies that say that there could be other purposes for plants producing methanol, including potentially signalling to um, bees or other, other trees even um, their presence and that perhaps the consumption of the methanol on a tree might not be an entirely safe thing. I, look, I'm no scientist. I just have this worry that, you know, to call methanol a waste product when there's, you know, nature, nature evolved it this way, there's probably some purpose for it somewhere. And these bacteria, I don't know if they consume all of it, but they, that's certainly what they live on. Um... Using it on macadamia trees, I mean, could be this enormous boon in that it's basically spray once and it's there for the life of the tree. But once it's in, you can't necessarily get it out. Um, I don't think there'd be any way to poison off something like bacteria once it's through to the entire stem and roots of the plant. It'd be basically uproot the plant or else, you know, um, or else live with it. So we don't know quite yet how much of a tree's nitrogen needs would be supplied by this bacteria. One person I've spoken to said it might be about a third. But macadamias need more than nitrogen. In fact, you know, this time of year, we're really looking at potassium uh, as a really strong need because it's, it's part of the fruiting process. And... Um, if you want trees that give you a crop as, a, as opposed to sort of lots of nice green leaves, you need a balanced diet and Utricia only provides nitrogen. I am a bit worried that if Utricia becomes widely adopted in macadamias, you might have trees that have unbalanced feeding because you haven't got any control after that on the amount of nitrogen that goes into a plant and if you're feeding other foods like manure, well, that's reasonably heavy in nitrogen as well. But if you're trying to then get, you know, the potassium, the phosphorus, the trace elements, that sort of thing, and you're trying to get it from a cheap source like manure, which is currently one of the cheapest forms of food, you might end up with a scenario where you've got too much nitrogen relative to the other nutrients and the tree ends up trying to strip all the other nutrients out of the soil because it's being supercharged with all this nitrogen. So there are dangers involved in this. I mean, I really love the idea of a free lunch. Everybody does. But you do have to wonder what the implications of it are when you th once you think past the free lunch. Think, well, look, if I put this in the tree and it's there for life, how is it going to affect me down the track? Um, you know, the free nitrogen is great, but I, do I end up with an unbalanced situation where I might have to rely on much more expensive selective chemical feeds to fill the rest of the nutrition profile and you're not actually going to save any money if you're forced to do that. 
would I be an early adopter of Utricia? I've given this some thought before making this video and I think the answer is I'd probably put it on my worst performing block and see what it did. Um, in some of the older trees where you know there's going to be very heavy leaf coverage at the top, there's actually a fairly high nitrogen requirement just to keep the tree alive, let alone make any crops for you. That might be a good target for an experiment with Utricia. Uh, as I understand it, it doesn't spread across whole orchards. It's not some viral thing, or at least I hope it isn't. Um, and you could try it on a single block without affecting the rest of your orchard and you could probably um, you know if, if there was some observable effect if you feed the rest of the orchard normally you could you could possibly see some difference in bringing a poor performing block back to life um, other than that though I'm not sure I'm going to jump in head first and do my entire orchard with something like Utricia. The idea of impregnating, a, a, it's a natural bacteria, in fact it's organic certified in the States, but the idea of putting that natural bacteria on a tree and turning it into a legume effectively, a supercharged legume at that, um, perhaps it's inbuilt conservatism, but it does ring some alarm bells about what it might do. So. Um, just to get in before the rest of the hype starts in the industry, have a look at Utricia, U-T-R-I-S-H-A. You can Google that up. There is some information. Um, and one of the um, PDFs put out by Corteva Agro AgriScience in Australia actually mentions macadamias by name. So it is definitely being considered for tree nut crops in Australia like macadamias. Um, whereas it's always been sort of associated with grasses and leafy crops until now. So what do you think, guys? What's your gut feel about this? Is it worth an experiment to spray a nitrogen-fixing bacteria on your trees? Would you do it partially like I might do, or would you jump in and go the whole hog? Um, bearing in mind, of course, the pluses for the environment of not using fossil fuels to make urea artificially but also bearing in mind that macadamias need that balanced diet and you're only giving them one part of it using these bacteria food for thought on this nice cloudy day which is just beautiful for mowing so i'm going to get back to that and i'm going to wait for your comments to come in look forward to reading them bye for now